15th, 16th, June, I. Elson. With our fleet tucked snugly away in the Thunderdome, today was to be the first of the expedition that we were not even to see a chipmunk. A hectic day was filled with shopping, washing and tumble drying our grubby wardrobe, followed by a sightseeing tour of Fairbanks in vehicles provided by squadron leader Bob Denny, the RAF Goose Bay engineer on detachment here. We again marvelled at the complete difference in cultures, standard of living and outlook of the people still within a few hundred miles of Russia. It was as if we had been transported to a different planet. Golf courses, museums, literally thousands of civilian light aircraft, adequate food supplies, running hot and cold water and last but not least a reliable supply of electricity at a flick of a switch. Later in the day, Bill took the opportunity to balance the Russian impress of rubles, dollars, expended and sorting the stack of confusing paperwork into an acceptable sequence for return to the accounts department at RAF Cranwell. On completion, four large envelopes were stuffed with receipts documenting the expenditure of 90 million, yes, 90 million rubles for the Russian sector of the journey. The majority of the paperwork was handwritten in duplicate or triplicate and adorned with a vast array of impressive stamps as computer technology has not yet reached very far east of Moscow. On Monday morning, Eilson burst into life again with exercise Cope Thunder in full swing. With Sed and Bill busily planning the Northern American sector of the route, the rest of the team concentrated on publicity and an assessment of the Islander payload. Discarding those items, Russian maps, etc., no longer required for this civilised portion of the route. This kit was to be returned to the UK with the scheduled RAF Hercules transport at the end of the Tornado Exercise Cope Thunder detachment. CBS and NBC television, along with the local radio station representatives, visited the hangar and the chipmunk story was subsequently broadcast on coast-to-coast -coast American and Canadian channels. By 1730 hours, the base commander and almost half the personnel stationed at Eilson had viewed the aircraft and we returned to the Gold Rush Inn to prepare for departure early tomorrow. It didn't take long to pack our measly 25 pounds of baggage, so we were able to indulge ourselves with an Alaskan salmon bake at the North Pole restaurant joined by several members of the RAF detachment. It is highly likely that we have now probably replaced our estimated £7 weight loss over the Russian sector with our overindulgence of good wholesome American cuisine.